Nick Land is somebody who's had a big impact on neo-reactionary philosophy, but I haven't done a video dedicated to any of his ideas yet on this channel. Over the last few months, I've been reading his work more widely, and I want to go ahead and remedy that today by discussing his idea of accelerationism. Now, discussing Land's accelerationism is interesting because he began writing about this when he was much more left-wing. And so you're going to notice at the beginning of this discussion, he's going to be borrowing heavily from the language of Marx's critique of capitalism. But as he goes on, he's going to arrive at an interesting conclusion. So Land begins by explaining that capital is always attempting to deterritorialize. It is always attempting to break down barriers. It is always attempting to break down the traditional structures of society, be they economic or cultural. He says that traditional societies were actually structured to prevent the cultural meltdown process that comes from uncontrolled capital. He compares it to the graphite rods used to control a nuclear reaction. The traditional culture controls the proto-capital in a way that keeps it from melting down the society. But once something comes by to rip the graphite rods out, you can see the reaction starting to take place and get out of control. For those familiar with gunboat diplomacy and the opening up of China and Japan, Land uses this as an example of the cultural constraints being ripped away and capital then running amok. Land says that capital ends up in a closed loop, where increasing commodification and increasing industrialization mutually excite each other. This creates an increasingly closed and positive feedback loop, which helps to accelerate each step of the development. This means that as technology advances, market selection becomes more and more efficient, which in turn accelerates the development of more and more technology, which again will be used to increase market efficiency. And you can quickly see how we end up in a self-perpetuating, ever-accelerating set of cycles. The process also starts to manufacture demand rather than meet it, as humans are more and more removed from the equation. Land is far from the only one to notice this part of the process. We can look at the work of someone like Christopher Lash in his book, The Culture of Narcissism, where he points out that mass industrialization requires the development of mass consumption, and these mass consumers will have to be trained to consume ever more advanced versions of products. And this is very easy to see when we look at really anything that exists in our society. Advertising agencies for a very long time have known that one of the keys to a successful product is to educate the consumers in order to manufacture demand for what your client is making. Very soon, the whole process simply becomes about being more efficient at training consumers to want your product and being more able to efficiently capitalize on the demand you've created. At this point, technology and capital are really only responding to each other, and the human consumer has been removed from the equation, except as something to be directed towards the consumption of the product. With the human now removed from the evolutionary cycle, producing and consuming things becomes increasingly abstract. As capital and technology are creating for their own sake instead of being driven by the needs of human flourishing. Again, by removing the human element, this has only accelerated the speed of development cycles, leaving humans and their needs further and further in the rearview mirror, subordinated to the ever-accelerating process of advancement and consumption. In fact, as Land points out, one of the core problems is as these development cycles accelerate, they become too fast for humans to really even think about what's going on and to formulate a response. Thinking takes time. Coming up with a plan takes time. Having a civilization that works together and coordinates to solve these problems takes time. But the human element has largely been removed from these processes. They now operate at a speed that humans cannot hope to react to. Decisions now seem to make themselves as advancement after advancement comes out rapid fire with no time for humanity to think or discuss or plan or act. As Land famously says, nothing human makes it out of the near future alive. Now, Land is of course not the only one to ever think that capitalism will eventually melt down and collapse in on itself. 
But instead of the Marxist prediction of this collapse into revolution and then utopia, Land believes that it's best to steer into this skid. Land believes that this accelerationism isn't really some kind of choice that you make, but an inevitable process that will take place no matter what you do. There's no need to have some kind of glorious revolution, in fact, that kind of thing is always going to fail. Land says that to critique capitalism is simply to participate in it, it's to do more of it. And that nothing can really be more destructive to this process than the acceleration process itself. I saw someone sum up this process in an interesting way that might help us to understand it. They said that in traditional societies, kings controlled people and proto-capital with other people. Under capitalism, people controlled people with capital. Under neoliberalism, capital controls people. And at the end of the acceleration process, there is only capital. Now, Land's process can be pretty abstract, I'm still thinking about it, and I'm not sure that I agree with everything here. But again, it is something that has been very impactful on neo-reactionary thought, and so I figured it was worth making a video that kind of gave an introduction to the idea. If you would like to know more about how this idea fits into the broader context of techno-capital, you can check out Charlemagne's excellent video on the subject. I'll put a link in the description below. As always, guys, if you like this video, please go ahead and click the like button. If you're here and you haven't subscribed yet, now's a great time to do so. If you want to follow me on Twitter or sub to my Rumble channel where I also post my videos, the links to do that will be in the description below. If you'd like to support my work on Subscribestar, like Roy Falker, yourself 654321, Singe SSK, Nick J, Count Elmsley, Narco Republican, or Keywitch, you can follow the link in the description to do that as well. I also have some new designs in the merch store, so if you guys want to pick up a mug or a magnet or something like that to help out the channel, I definitely appreciate it. Thanks for coming by and watching, guys, and as always, I'll talk to you next time.